Good morning class! Welcome back to our channel where we learn more about grade 9 science. So grab your papers, your grade 9 science module, and your pen, and let's begin our discussion. First of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Sir Dan, your science teacher in grade 9. Again, for this week, we are still on our learning competency, which deals with the different and basic features and importance of photosynthesis and cellular respiration. Since we are done already with photosynthesis last week, we're going to discuss about cellular respiration this week. And before we begin our new topic for today, let us have a short recap of the things we learned from our past lesson. Oi class, what is photosynthesis? Photosynthesis is a process by which plants can manufacture their own food. Very good, Marco. Now, what are the raw materials needed for photosynthesis? Sir, the raw materials needed for photosynthesis are the following. First of all, radiant energy, another one is water in the form of H2O, and last is carbon dioxide. Very good, Marco. Now, what is the site for photosynthesis? Sir, the photosynthesis mainly occurs in the leaves in a specific part called chloroplasts. Very good, Marco. Now, what are the two phases of photosynthesis? Sir, the two phases of photosynthesis are the following, the light-dependent reaction and the light-independent reaction. Very good, Marco. Now, will you please explain the whole chemical reaction for photosynthesis? Okay, so photosynthesis, again, comes from the word photo, which means light, and synthesis, which means uh, putting up together. So again, photosynthesis is a process where plants make their own food. In order for it to make their own food, we will be needing 6 carbon dioxide, 6 water molecules in order to yield uh, glucose, 1 unit of glucose, which is C6H12O6, and 6 units of oxygen. And it is needed uh, radiant energy in the form of sunlight. There are two phases of photosynthesis. There is light phase and then the dark phase. Now, let me show you quickly. Okay, class. So, the light phase is consists of photoactivation, photolysis, and photophosphorylation. In this diagram, we can see photoactivation. Inside the chloroplast, there is a structure called thylakoids. Now, as it receives sunlight or radiant energy, the atoms become excited and produces energy. So that is photoactivation. The next stage will be photolysis. Now, the energy used in photoactivation will be utilized in order to break down the water molecules into oxygen, which will be released and hydrogen which will be needed in order to produce electron carrier NADPH Photophosphorylation produces ATP or energy and NADPH which is an electron carrier Calvin cycle or the dark phase is run by ATP and NADPH which is produced in the light reaction. It produces the glucose. So here we can see the Calvin cycle produces carbon dioxide and C6H12O6 or the unit of glucose. It utilizes the energy coming from the light reaction energy and also the electron carriers produced in the light reaction phase. Sir, meaning to say, the whole reaction for photosynthesis is uh, it needs carbon dioxide, water molecule, and in the help of sunlight, it will yield glucose plus oxygen. 
Very good, Marco. Now, do you know that there is an inverse process to photosynthesis? Uh, not yet, sir. Very good. So, today, we're going to discuss about it. And it is the cellular respiration. Marco, what is your favorite food? Sir, I love burgers. Okay, Marco. So, do you know that the animals eat plants and they are called herbivores? And these plants are converted into energy. As we all know, plants get energy from the sunlight. So, what happens to the food that we eat? So first of all, we break our food down into small molecules. And we use the energy stored in the buns in our food in order to make ATP. Again, ATP is the universal energy unit for living organisms. Number three, a small amount of the food becomes waste in the form of feces or urine. Cellular respiration, again, is a process in which cells produce the energy called ATP which are needed in order for us to survive. ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate. So the whole chemical formula for cellular respiration is different from photosynthesis. As we can see, oxygen and sugar is needed. And as it is digested, we produce carbon dioxide, water, and energy in the form of ATP. So basically, it is an inverse chemical formula for photosynthesis. So the reverse of photosynthesis is cellular respiration, and the cellular respiration is the reverse chemical formula for photosynthesis. What types of organisms undergo cellular respiration? So there are different bacteria that undergo cellular respiration, microorganisms, and also human beings and other animals. Plants also undergo cellular respiration. Worms, and some animals. Cellular respiration occurs in all living cells. Marco, if chloroplast is the site for photosynthesis, then what is the site for cellular respiration? Tell me what cellular organelle is that, sir? Okay, Marco, it is the mitochondria. It is the powerhouse of the cell and it is the site for cellular respiration. Cellular respiration is subdivided into three processes. First is the glycolysis. Second is the Krebs cycle or the citric acid cycle. And the last one is the electron transport chain. Here is an overview of the cellular respiration. So we're going to discuss this further on our discussion. Again, the first step for cellular respiration is glycolysis. Glyco meaning to say glucose and lysis meaning to say breaking down. So meaning to say we break down the glucose molecule. It occurs in the cytoplasm of the cell. And molecules of glucose are broken down into two molecules of pyruvic acid. So as we can see in this uh, diagram, glucose uses two ATP in order to produce two units of pyruvic acid. Cells must use two ATP and the products are 2-pyruvic acid and 2-ATP also and 2-NADH So as you can see in this diagram, glycolysis uses glucose in order to produce pyruvate and it also produces 
two ATP and NADH at the top. Now, the products will enter this uh, this structure, and it is the mitochondria. Okay, as we can see here is a diagram of mitochondria. It is composed of inner membrane, outer membrane, free stay, and the matrix. So the mitochondria is the organelle where the final stages of cellular respiration occurs. And these are the following, Krebs cycle and electron transfer chain. Okay, so what is Krebs cycle? Krebs cycle is an aerobic process, meaning to say it only happens if there is an oxygen present. It also occurs in the matrix of the mitochondria, which is the liquid part on the inside of a mitochondria. Now, the pyruvic acid from the glycolysis, which happens earlier, enters to form 2 ATP, which is the energy, 6 NADH, an electron carrier, 2 FADH2, another electron carrier, and carbon dioxide, which is released when we exhale. It is also called the citric acid cycle. Okay class, so the last process will be the electron transfer chain. Now this is the most important among all the processes because it generates a lot of energy. It occurs in inner mitochondrial membrane or the cristae. If you are familiar with the movie Transformers, um, I believe that they are fighting for uh, a device called cristae which contains a large amount of energy. Now, it has something to do with the cristae on the mitochondria because it contains a lot of energy. Now, this release large amount of chemical energy in a form of adenosine triphosphate or ATP. In a total of 32 ATP and water is produced. But, as it consumes 2 ATP, actually it produces 34 ATP but it consumes another 2 ATP for the process. Again, the three processes for the cellular respiration are the following. Glycolysis, wherein glucose is utilized in order to create pyruvate. It yields 2 ATP but it also uses 2 ATPs. Now, it will move on to mitochondria and inside that is the processes citric acid cycle wherein the acetyl coenzyme A or the pyruvate will yield 2 ATPs uh, NADH and FADH2 which are both electron carriers. Now, these electron carriers will move for the electron transport chain which is very vital in order to create 34 ATPs but 2 ATPs were used so therefore 32 ATPs only. And the other so, in total, we have produced 32 ATPs plus 2 for citric acid cycle, so that is 34 ATPs. And for glycolysis, we have produced 2 ATPs. So, overall, we have produced 36 ATPs in total. There are two types of cellular respiration. We have aerobic and anaerobic. Aerobic meaning to say there is a presence of oxygen and as we have discussed earlier that is aerobic. Anaerobic on the other hand happens without the presence of oxygen. So anaerobic respiration since we already have discussed about aerobic respiration uh, anaerobic does not need oxygen. So, an example of this are the alcohol fermentation which occurs in plant cells and yeast in the absence of oxygen which produces alcohols inside the wine. So, that is the process for making alcohol or alcohol contains um, and also wines. Lactic acid fermentation on the other hand happens inside our muscles. In, due to lack of oxygen, the cells 
or the mitochondria is subject into anaerobic respiration which produces lactic acid build up in our muscles and it causes the muscle soreness. So if you are doing an extraneous activity and after that on the other day you feel soreness of the muscle then your body undergoes anaerobic respiration. Now, class, how does yeast make bread rice? So, as we all know, uh, the yeast undergoes cellular respiration in the form of anaerobic respiration. So, it produces carbon dioxide. One of the products of alcoholic fermentation is carbon dioxide. So, as the carbon dioxide makes the little air pockets in bread and it makes it rice. So, as we bake it, the yeast inside the bread will form carbon dioxide as it cellular respirates and it will expand and form uh, mini pockets of air inside the bread. Okay Marco, how can we compare photosynthesis and cellular respiration? So, photosynthesis it takes place in chloroplast, while in cellular respiration, it takes place in mitochondria. Very good, Marco. In photosynthesis, sir, carbon dioxide and water react, using light energy to produce glucose and oxygen, while in cellular respiration, glucose and oxygen react to produce carbon dioxide, water, and energy, which in the form ATP. Very good, Marco. In photosynthesis, sir, the light energy from the sun changes to chemical energy in glucose, while in cellular respiration, chemical energy in glucose changes to chemical energy in ATP. Alright, class, we're done with our discussion, so it's time for you to do your learning task. For this week, we're going to do learning task 4, learning task 5, summative test number 4, and your reflection and also performance task number four feel free to pause while I turn the presentation in order for you to have more time answering the learning task Learning task number 5. Feel free to take a pause while I turn the presentation. class that would be all for today do you have any questions feel free to ask your question using our group chats facebook page and google classroom thank you for coming hope to see you soon